Every month, DIY.to gets loads of products sent to us. Um, can you do a review on this? Can you advertise this for me? Um, it, I'm, sure I, I'm, I'm sorry to say that over 90% of them, um, in fact over 95% of them get sent back or put in the bin because they're simply not fit for purpose and we don't want to be associated with um, snake oil as it were. Um, this however was entirely different. This was sent to us by a company called Endo Enterprises. It's called Endotherm and its sole purpose is to save you money on your central heating bills. There is an incredible amount of science packed into this tiny little bottle. Um, and water is used in your central heating because it's ready, readily available, it's easily pumped, it flows very smoothly, it isn't dangerous, but it isn't necessarily the best conductor of heat. It's not the most efficient um, thing you could use to heat your home because heat takes quite a long time to pass through it, to transfer through it. Endotherm reduces the surface tension in a scientific way of the water itself. It actually changes the properties of the water and it increases its thermal conductivity so heat can pass more quickly through it, which means that your boiler is working much more efficiently and that resolves in about a 15% saving on your central heating bills and that's quite incredible, a saving of 15%. So, um, there are a number of things that uh, endotherm does as well as just um, uh, make, make your boiler more efficient. It, it acts as a slight inhibitor to the water and um, so prevents some of the rust gathering um, and it also increases the heat capacity of the, the water so it holds the water for longer. So all in all it makes your boiler, it allows your boiler to operate in a much more efficient way and this little bottle will work in a system that will heat up to 10 or 12 radiators. Obviously the endotherm doesn't heat it, it's your system that heats it. If you've got a bigger house, if you've got more than 12 radiators, you're going to need more endotherm. So this little bottle will give you a 15% saving on your heating bills. Quite an incredible saving and now we're going to show you how to get it into your system. Endotherm have been very, very clever with this product. It's ever so simple to install. It's very, very simple to use. You put it in and you leave it and the savings are massive. So we're gonna talk about putting it in. I've already taken the top off, so I'll put that out of the way for a moment. Um, we have a normal single panel radiator here. Um, there are two types of central heating essentially. One is a conventional central heating system where the water from the uh, boiler is heated and passed through the radiators and that water is topped up through something called a header tank in your loft. You, you possibly have a big water tank and a smaller header tank as you can see from the insert. That water constantly feeds the central heating system and that the boiler pumps that round or the central heating pumps pump that round your system. The second is on a combination boiler which heats the water on demand and the boiler pumps the water round the system. With either system, with a conventional system, one would normally um, drain the central heating system down um, by fitting a hose pipe, um, which you'll see, to the drain plug at the lock shield end of the system. Um, and you would drain the system down, put your um, put the uh, endotherm into your header tank, and that would flush it around the system. But we're going to show you a way today that will allow you to do that, whether you've got a conventional system or a, a combination system. And we're simply going to empty some water out of the radiator so that we can put some endotherm in the actual radiator. Or if you have a towel rail, that might be easier for you. Um, and that's a dead easy way of getting it in. So the very first thing to do is to make absolutely sure your boiler is turned off. That's important. So once the boiler's turned off, we'll make sure all of our valves are shut. If you are in any doubt about closing the valves and how these valve works, how the valves work, please look at our videos on YouTube and on DIY Doctor about how radiator valves work. Sometimes uh, the thermostatic valve here has a frost setting. 
the, it doesn't detect the temperature of the radiator water, it detects the temperature of the room. So if your room is calling for more heat, this valve can open and if your radiator's off, flooding can occur. So please double check, if you're unsure, please go and see our videos. So the first thing to do is to make sure that these are off and this particular rad, do, this valve does go down to zero, so I know that that's off. Tighten the lock tubal valve cap right up and once we've um, set everything so we know that no more radio water can get into this radiator so now is the time to, to let some out so we're going to put um, a, a, a paint tray a drip tray underneath this valve and we're going to let enough water out to make sure that, that that's lifting that up a little bit too high the cloth it's always a good idea to have a couple of cloths handy um, so we've got a we've got a a paint tray underneath the radiator valve. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen the nut on the radiator valve. That's when I'm going to use that. Those footprints there to hold the valve steady with a cloth on it so I don't damage the valve. I'm going to put any, any marks on it. So I'm going to open that valve. You can see the water start to drip out. let a little bit of water out we can see that coming out there the valves the everything's turned off so the water is running into the into the drip tray you can use a little cup or whatever now what we need to do is to empty enough from the radiator to make absolutely sure that we can get the bottle of endotherm in and what I'll do there is I'll just close that up again for a second and to make it run a little bit faster, we can open the bleed valve on the end of the radiator. Just with a little radiator bleed key, I'm, I'm holding that so that the camera can see, get a close up on that. Just undo that to let a little bit of air into the system and that should make that run a little bit faster. Now, you don't want to watch, sit here waiting for, for five or 10 minutes for me to empty this. So we're gonna fade in, fade out rather, and fade in again when I've got a, a, a paint tray full of water, or half full, which is about the same as the bottle of endotherm, and then I'll show you how we put the endotherm in. Okay, so we, we have about the contents of a bottle of endotherm in the drip tray. So we'll reverse the procedure here. We'll tighten up the radiator valve nut, holding that in place, there we go, okay, we'll move our drip tray very carefully out of the way, spilling a little bit of water, which is why it's always a good idea to have a cloth underneath, so there we go, okay, so we've got no more water there, now we're going to go back up to our, our bleed valve, and Lest we forget, we're going to tighten that up now, so that we know that that's tight. And then we're actually going to undo the cap that holds the, the bleed nut. So we're going to take the radiator cap out completely. And endotherm have been very clever here because as a, when a plumber came, comes on to site to do this, he would have something like this that he's made up himself, a compression coupling with the nut missing, a 90 degree bend leading to a compression funnel. He would then fit the compression fitting into the end of the radiator. I won't do that all the way. Hold the funnel up and tip the endotherm into the radiator like that. Endotherm realise of course that this isn't this apparatus isn't something that everybody's got indoors. So they've manufactured for you this little device. This is just a little coupling which represents the compression coupling that you just saw with a nozzle on the end of it that fits into the piece of hose that they send and the cap that fits onto the top of the bottle. So we will first of all we'll take that bottle cap off 
and we'll screw in the coupling. I'm trying to do this so that my fingers are out of the way and you can see what's happening. Using the spanner again. Tighten that up. Goes a good way in. So, having tightened the um, nut into the radiator, we then get our endotherm and replace the the cap, uh, the endotherm cap, with the filler cap, and simply push the hose down, push that well into there, and tip that straight into the radiator. Um, it couldn't get any simpler than that. It's going to take about 90 seconds for that to go in. Then, of course, we remove the nozzle, replace the radiator cap, tighten up the bleed key if we've left that open, and everything's great. We have then got um, a very simple way of reducing our heating bills by 15%. Great science from Endotherm, a great product, and DIY Doctor is very pleased to recommend it. Get some and enjoy the savings.